Japan and India are proceeding with negotiations on an atomic energy agreement. Talks on developing nuclear ties have been stalled since the March accident in Fukushima. Japanese Foreign Minister Koichiro Gemba met with his Indian counterpart S.M. Krishna in Tokyo on Saturday. We were again asked to resume the talks by the Indian side. We've agreed to strengthen working level discussions so as to advance the deal. Gemba told Krishna that Japan will provide all the details about investigations into the nuclear accident and the government's efforts to ensure nuclear safety. He added that he informed India on Japan's position on nuclear disarmament and non-nuclear proliferation. After the talks, Foreign Minister Krishna said he is optimistic about the negotiations. If concluded, the agreement would allow Japan to sell nuclear-related technology to India. India plans to build about 20 nuclear reactors by 2020 to address a chronic power shortage amid its rapid economic growth. But the Japanese government has been cautious about striking a deal, as India is not a member of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Um, the fact that people are scared is a reality. People are scared after Fukushima uh, because supposedly this was taking place, Fukushima that is, uh, in a society and a context where a lot of safety measures had been taken, yet the disaster took place. The major concern here still pertains to safety and there we have had in the last month or so assurances from uh, the NTPC, assurances from the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board and now assurances from the Prime Minister himself that everything is alright, everything is safe. I'm afraid this no longer convinces anybody. If you look at uh, Fukushima and Japan, Japan is a society where people have traditionally respected those in authority. Whether it is the government, whether it is technocrats, it comes as a big shock to them if there is a failure of governance, failure in other ways, malfeasance of uh, any sort. Even after Fukushima, people took the authorities at their word, going along with the precautions that were taken, displacement and so on. It was only after a month or so that even the traditionally quiescent and extremely tolerant Japanese people finally realized that the wool was being pulled over their eyes, that people were not being forthcoming about the reality, about how much damage was being caused, how much damage was caused to dairy products, to vegetables, to habitation, to the sand lots in which children were playing outside. Uh, schools and today I believe the biggest impact in Japan apart from the radioactivity has been the shattering of confidence in authority uh, as a result of Fukushima. In India neither are people so traditionally tolerant of authority nor have authority commanded such respect both due to the sociological conditions in this country as well as the behavior of people in authority. And people of late in the last year, two years, have developed a very deep suspicion of those in authority. Whether it is in the various scams that have uh, taken place, uh, whether it is in addressing poverty issues. Why should the public take the Prime Minister's assurance on Kudankulam seriously, when a similar assurance that Everything is all right with the 2G scam, rules were followed, was shown not to be true. When those in authority today say, if uh, you earn more than 35 rupees a day, you're all right, you're not poor. So people have today a very deep suspicion. And in the nuclear field, 
we have just seen the government having come out with a draft bill for the nuclear regulatory authority which far from giving the autonomy and independence to the nuclear regulatory authority which should have been done and which activists have been demanding for such a long time has actually gone in the reverse direction and has created a nuclear regulatory authority which is answerable to the government in every single way. So under circumstances like this an assurance by the Prime Minister that everything is safe I am afraid will not cut any ice.